Hi everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy and uh, this is the continuation of my series of videos on Risk Management 1 versus Risk Management 2. And today I wanted to talk about Risk Management Framework documents. Not Risk Management Framework as a concept that has to be integrated into everything, but as a, as a physical document, um, it's equivalent to a Risk Management procedure because it usually captures um, roles and responsibilities, principles, um, risk management process, uh, monitoring, um, well, basically it's a lot of stuff that uh, you can copy paste from ISO 31000. I in fact, without breaking the copyright, that's exactly what I would recommend you do. Just paraphrase everything that's in the ISO 31000 and that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good framework. Add some bits and pieces. Uh, whatever you, whatever you do to that document, it doesn't matter because it's actually risk management one. Your decision makers couldn't care less what's inside your risk management framework document. The only people who care is the risk manager who wrote it and feels passionate about it, and I feel very sad for those people. Uh, the internal auditors, external auditors, and some external parties who ask to see these documents, this document this document uh, once in a while. So this whole thing, this risk management framework document is completely RM1. That basically means save time, you don't have to dr drastically update it, you can just play lip service, don't involve business because they couldn't care, they, they don't care what's inside the document, do it yourself, um, get it approved, treat it as a formal necessary evil um, I mean, again, if you can afford, don't have it at all, because there's a better way. There's risk management too. You don't need that document. In fact, you may throw away the document and it will have zero impact on how business makes decisions. So clearly, for the decision, from a decision maker's point of view, it's completely relevant, irrelevant um, uh, document. So save yourself some time. Don't, uh, I mean, I, I feel just very sad for risk managers that get consultants involved to write those risk management framework documents because these documents you can just copy paste them off the web there's such <laughs> well ISO 31000 is the best place to kind of paraphrase from um, these documents are so irrelevant that spending any type of effort money or time on preparing them should be illegal there is risk management too and I hope you're kind of beginning to see the theme and the theme is integrating into decision making. That means your roles and responsibilities should not be in the risk management framework document, they should be in the position descriptions, committee charters and other documents that have roles and responsibilities. That means your risk management process, first it shouldn't be one, there will be multiple and those multiple risk management processes should not be documented in a single consolidated overarching document that nobody reads. They should be documented inside policies and procedures that the business owns. So you don't ask business to read your document, you take your staff to their domain. So you make changes to the procurement procedure and you say before making a procurement decision, before choosing a vendor, these are the risks that you have to consider. You put it into the budgeting procedure and you're saying before finalizing the budget you have to run scenarios or simulations to test how different assumptions play out and how much risk we can absorb in the budget for the next year. In the strategic planning procedure you write that before finalizing a strategy or before making an important strategic decision you have to run simulations to analyze how changes in assumptions and the risk associated with that will have an impact on the company performance, strategic objectives and so on. Before calculating the strategic KPI, you run simulations and so on and so on and so on. So risk management one is having a single overarching wonderful document that nobody reads and if you can get rid of it, do so. However, if you can't, keep it and just you know use it to show to the external world. However, for the actual decision makers, you want to take risk methodologies and risk management principles to their domain, to their work, to their documents. So updating most, if not all, 
policies and procedures within the organization to make sure there is an element that the, the, the elements, some of the risk principles are there, some of the actual practical tools and requirements are there. That's what risk management too is, is all about. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Do write underneath this video. Um, if this is the first video you see, there's a whole series and make sure you subscribe to the Risk Academy channel on YouTube to see the other 250 videos on various risk management topics. See you in the next one.